Hi, this is Mariah. Welcome to your Daily Mana, Day 161. Today we're going to read Deuteronomy Chapter 8, Remember the Lord Your God. The whole commandment that I command you today, you shall be careful to do, that you may live and multiply, and go in and possess the land that the Lord swore to give to your fathers. And you shall remember the whole way that the Lord your God has led you these forty years in the wilderness, that he might humble you, testing you to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. And he has humbled you, and let you hunger, and fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you know that man does not live by bread alone. But man lives by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. And that is a verse that Jesus himself quote when he was um, in the wilderness learning to live on God's provision alone and strength. He had no food or water for 40 days. And then Satan came and tempted the Lord to say, hey, you're hungry. Why don't you turn these stones into bread and feed yourself? But Jesus resisted him and said, man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. And that was recorded in Matthew chapter 4 verse 4 so um, if he had listened to the devil or Satan then he then Jesus would have been guilty of committing sin by obeying the devil and so he's like no I know I'm hungry but I'm gonna trust the Lord to meet my needs and Jesus passed the test he there's also other tests that the devil tried to get Jesus to do to prove who he was but he he was steadfast and worshiping the Lord only and not um, trying to prove himself to this devil. So even the Lord himself spent time in the wilderness learning what it was to um, go hungry, thirsty, and yet have God meet his needs as the people of Israel had done. Let's go ahead and continue with our reading. So we're on verse um, 4. Your clothing did not wear out on you and your foot did not swell these 40 years. Know then in your heart that, as a man disciplines his son, the Lord your God disciplines you. So you shall keep the commandments of the Lord your God by walking in his ways and by fearing him. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land of brooks, of water, of fountains and springs flowing out in the valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive trees and honey. A land in which you will eat bread without scarcity, in which you will lack nothing. A land whose stones are iron, and out of those hills you can dig copper. And you shall eat and be full, and you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land that he has given you. Take care lest you forget the Lord your God by not keeping his commandments and his rules and his statutes, which I command you today, lest when you have eaten and are full and have built good houses and live in them, and when your herds and flocks multiply, and your silver and gold is multiplied, and all that you have is multiplied, then your heart will be lifted up, and you forget the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, who led you through the great and terrifying wilderness, with its fiery serpents and scorpions, and thirsty ground where there, where there was no water, who brought you water out of the flinty rock, who fed you in the wilderness with manna that your fathers did not know, that he might humble you and test you to do you good in the end. Beware, lest you say in your heart, My power and the might of my hand have gotten me this wealth. You shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth, that he may confirm his covenant that he swore to your fathers as it is this day. And if you forget the Lord your God and go after other gods and serve them and worship them, I solemnly warn you today that you shall surely perish. Like the nations that the Lord makes to perish before you, so shall you perish, because you would not obey the voice of the Lord your God. So the Lord does not show partiality. He rewards those who obey him and those who disobey him repeatedly and become hardened in their hearts, he disciplines, and if it's bad enough, will actually destroy them. So, you can't really say God is racist in favoring the Jews, because he gives them the same warning, that if you go after these other gods, I'm going to treat you the same way 
that I treated the nations who I drove out before you. So there's no partiality. It was either Jew or Gentile. There's only one true God. There's only one God that nature respects and obeys. It's not Baal. It's not Ra. It's not Zeus. It is the Lord Yahweh himself. So God is very faithful. He always comes through on his promises. However, um, in order for us to get where he wants us to be, because he doesn't just care about our happiness and comfort level. In fact, those things are less than secondary because the most important thing that God as a loving father does and cares about is our character, our spiritual health, our relationship with him. And a lot of times are the things that make us feel comfortable or make our lives easy are actually idols. And if um, he doesn't deal with those, you know, we won't be ready to spend eternity with God. We're going to be so infantile in our understanding. Our love is going to be um, very mediocre. We're not going to be able to appreciate heaven. So he has to actually um, work on us, you know, kind of like diamonds in the rough or gold that needs to be refined of its impurities. And so God, a lot of times, puts us purposely in difficult situations so that we can grow as, as people in our character, becoming more like Christ, more like God himself. We are his people, and he desires us to be conformed into his image, not just look like him physically, but actually have the thoughts, heart, and mind of God himself. And so to do that, he has to put us in situations that, uh, you know, force us to be to work out the, the crud in our lives, the bad thoughts, the prejudice, whatever, the lust, the adultery, and refine us to be more like Jesus. And even Christ himself, understanding his mission, his purpose was to die for people. You know, um, these people were wanting a kingdom that was earthly to, you know, be free from the Romans, to have a glorious earthly kingdom. But Jesus first, before he could deliver on that promise, had to make a way so that there would be people who would be um, worthy to enter the kingdom. So he actually had to purify the souls of mankind by dying on the cross, making atonement for their sins um, by spilling his blood on the cross. And anyone who puts their faith in that sacrifice and receives Jesus as Lord, receives forgiveness, the Holy Spirit comes into that person, enters them, renews their heart and mind, teaches them God's ways so when they read the Bible, the Holy Spirit gives them understanding and causes them to grow in the Lord. So um, if Jesus were to bring the earthly kingdom down while he was alive without going to the cross, no one would be worthy to be enter into that kingdom except for Jesus himself. So the Jews didn't understand that um, before the glorious kingdom of the millennial reign can come, Jesus had to make a way for humanity to be um, marked as citizens. And that is through faith in the sacrifice of what Jesus had done for them, atoning for their sins. So all who believe in Christ and receive his free gift of mercy um, are marked with the Holy Spirit and become a child of God and members of the heavenly kingdom, which we are still waiting on. So Jesus will come again, but um, in preparation for that, the physical pain, the torture, being misunderstood, hated by the religious leaders, mocked, flogged, um, bearing the weight of the sinners while they were still mocking Jesus. He foreknew all of this, so he had to mentally prepare himself, being led by the Spirit into the wilderness, and no food or water for 40 days, so that he could train his body to rely solely on God. Because he was going to have to deliver up his, his life to God the Father. He was going to give up his life, pour it out like a drink offering, and be crucified and killed. Imagine that the terror of that. And so, spending that time in the desert and then being tempted by the deceiver, Satan, you know, telling him, oh, make these stones into bread if you're so hungry. Prove that you're the Son of God. Jump from this cliff. And if you're the Son of God, as you claim to be, the angels will catch you lest you dash your foot on a stone. And Jesus would rebuke him over and over again with Scripture. And that's how we can fight the devil. If we hide God's word in our heart, 
when temptation comes, it can be a safeguard against evil, against the flesh, so that we can live by the Spirit and be victorious over temptation. And that's why um, I had the picture of Jesus, because in Matthew 4.4, 4, he quotes the, the verse that we just read, that man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. And in, in today's reading, that was um, verse 3 that Jesus quoted of uh, Deuteronomy chapter 8. So anyways, um, that was for today's reading. Tomorrow we're going to look at Deuteronomy 9, and that is titled, Not Because of Righteousness, and it's also going to mention the golden calf. So God is going to tell the Israelites that, hey, I've chosen you to be a special possession, you are my people, but it's not because you're better than anyone else. You're just as bad as these other nations. Remember the golden calf? So God is trying to tell, teach the people that he's choosing these people to be a light to the rest of the world. It is through the Jews that the Messiah will come. Remember when God told Abraham, through your descendants, all the nations of the peoples will be blessed. And that was the prophecy concerning Christ. Christ comes from the Jews. And um, the Jews need saving, just as much as the Gentiles. Um, whether you're Jewish or, or a non-Jewish person, we all sin, we all need a Savior. The Jews have the honor of being um, relatives of, of the Lord, the Messiah of the whole world. You know, they have the law, and those that live by the law are a light to those who are in darkness. And then Jesus comes and fulfills the law perfectly. All 613 Mosaic laws. Jesus fulfilled perfectly. Not even the smallest law did he overlook. Because even the best, most devout Jews mess up from time to time. So they needed Jesus. Um, the, the law was just to, like a mirror to show where we fall short. Jesus being the one and only man, God you know, came down from heaven, manifested in human form, lived a perfect life. He lived perfectly, not breaking even the least one. So we can all look to him for forgiveness, for mercy, for strength, and it's a beautiful thing. So anyways, I guess our time's up for now, so I just want to say thank you for listening. I hope you have a great day. God bless. Stay humble and true to the faith. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.